I don't like this comb top that I have. Anyway, hey everyone, it's Mrs. Successfully Unemployed. I am your property investor, landlord, and I like to do things very hands-on. So I'm going to show you how to quickly paint a room using the Flexio 3000 by Wagner Spray Gun. Stay tuned. Hey, if you're new to the station, welcome. I'm Mr. Successfully Unemployed. And again, I am a property owner, investor, landlord, what have you. I'm very hands-on, so I like to take care of projects and try to save as much money as possible without skimping on the cost. So I'm going to quickly show you how to paint a room using the Wagner Flexio 3000 spray gun. So these are all the items that you'll need. So let's just go through them real quick. Obviously you have the spray gun here. The Flexio 3000 comes with two canisters. The smaller one is for trim work, uh, trim work, cabinetry, you know, small fences. The larger one, which is what we'll be using, is more so for large surfaces, so for walls and um, garage doors and things of that nature. These are the settings that I have it set on. I have it on a wide spray nozzle. I have this one set on a seven and I have the air power set on a six or a seven as well. It depends on the paint that you're using. So do a test spray in a test area, see how much paint is coming out, and then you can just adjust the amount of air power that's coming out, the nozzle uh, size, or this particular um, uh, adjustment as well. And the paint that I'm using is the Valspar Signature. I like it just because, again, this is a rental property and they tend to have kids and you know people just like to rub up against things and furniture is rubbing up against the walls. It does have a good um, scuff and um, you know chip and protection, so don't have to worry about always having to come out and retouch up. Obviously, you need your tape, painter's tape, screwdrivers just to take off the face plates for your outlets and switches, a paint guide which will help cover up the trim and the ceiling when you're spray painting. I'm using a P95 respirator. You don't necessarily need to use a respirator. However, it is best to use uh, to do so. If you have maybe a KN95 mask or an N95 mask, those are disposable. You could use them. However, just make sure that you only use them one per each room. They are disposable, so they are less effective as more paint gets into the fabric. Uh, obviously, you just goggles to protect your eyes and then you have your floor coverings. I use a mixture of both the plastic and the paper. The paper I tend to do on the borders and then the plastic I tend to do in the middle or any areas that's, that is not being covered by the, um, by the paper. You want to make sure that you do cover up your floors and anything else because this is a spray gun so there will be some overspray and you do not want to have overspray on your floors and then you have to you know, do another step of cleaning up your floors and paint remover and everything of that nature. So with that being said, here's the steps and the quick video of painting this room. All right, so obviously you wanna protect your floors. I usually do the outline borders first and then I put the plastic down, use a painter's tape to hold them down and then I take off the um, faceplate covers and if there's anything that you don't want to have paint get on or it's just difficult to try to spray paint around, like say this baseboard heater, I could cover it up. However, since I'm using the paint guide, I necessarily don't have to. But if that's all, let's get the painting. So the first thing I like to do is paint the ceiling and then the trim. So you just want to make sure your spray nozzle is centered correctly and positioned correctly. So usually, it's, if it's up and down, it means you just spray left to right, so which is the one that we want. And then when we get to the walls, we want to switch it so that we can just paint up and down, okay? So let's get started.